Well, hello, and you are watching the Live Today Show right here on KMTV Channel 21. I'm Dr. Cherie, your host for the show and the founder of the Live Today Foundation, where our mission is to provide joy, inspiration, and free compression garments to under-resourced cancer survivors and patients living with lymphedema. Um, I want to share with you guys some information if you want to figure out how you can get in touch with our organization and you want to learn more, please visit us at www.live-today.org. You can always feel free to shoot us an email at info at live-today.org. For those of you that still love that good old phone, you can pick it up and give us a call at 754-220-0234. And for those of you that are out on social media, we'd love for you to follow us Shoot us your comments, shoot us some show ideas, and just let us know if this content is good and if you're being blessed by it. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter at livetoday.org. That is livetoday, D-O-T-O-R-G. And you can find all of these videos and more at YouTube at the Live Today Foundation. Just look up the Live Today Foundation. Now, guys, I also want to... Uh, let you guys know that we have been doing a lot of things um, with the Live Today show, even in the midst of this pandemic. And fortunately, we have been blessed where we could put uh, boots to the ground and get the help to individuals that have needed it most during this pandemic. We as a nation have fallen so behind on breast cancer screening, um, follow up for complications of cancer treatment, lymphedema being one of them. And so although we're kind of behind on the eight ball, we are wanting to move forward and regain the ground that we've lost uh, by getting the resources to individuals that need it. Now, I, as the founder of the Live Today Foundation, also as a physician and as a breast cancer uh, survivor, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions regarding lymphedema and the COVID vaccine. Many individuals have asked my opinion as to whether or not the COVID vaccine is safe and should they get it. I am not your treating physician. And so therefore, I always tell individuals, follow up with your treating physician, get his or her opinion, uh, and then read the data and make the decision for yourself. But I am proud to announce that I have received both doses of the vaccine. I did receive the Pfizer vaccine. Um, I got both doses without any incident. The second dose, about five to six hours after getting the dose, I did take a dose of um, naproxen just to make sure um, but I never really felt any symptoms outside of a minor sore arm. And so if you value my opinion, if you value my walk, um, and if you are one of those individuals that believe in following individuals that practice what they preach, you can use that information as you will. But I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about lymphedema and the COVID vaccine. And so uh, let me go here and I want to share with you my screen. And let's just, let's just have a conversation about uh, the COVID vaccine, okay? So lymphedema and the COVID vaccine, what do we know, all right? Well, in general, patients with lymphedema are not really considered to have a weakened immune system. Some patients with rare forms of genetically inherited lymphedema that is primary lymphedema, not the secondary lymphedema that you get as a result of cancer treatment. Uh, but those individuals that um, have rare forms of primary lymphedema may have weakened immune systems. And you know, you you but you would have typically been told this when you were diagnosed. And so again, I tell you, follow up with your treating physicians, get the information, do your research, and make the choice for yourself. Now, I will tell you this, um, and I'm happy to share this information. Today, March 1st, is the first day of Lymphedema Awareness Month. The entire month of March is Lymphedema Awareness Month. Lymphedema Awareness Day is March 6th. I'm not sure when this show will air. March 6th would be perfect, but for Lymphedema Awareness Month, I just thought that it would be appropriate to share with you the information that's out there regarding the COVID vaccine and lymphedema. So when we look at the COVID 
that uh, COVID-19 vaccination. It is advisable for patients with lymphedema and should help your body produce the antibodies to fight the virus should you encounter it in the future. Now, patients with forms of genetically inherited lymphedema, that is primary lymphedema, associated with the weakened immune systems should also have the vaccine. However, it is possible that these patients may not make a full immune response, right? Because their immune systems are already weakened and therefore uh, they should continue to take precautions, all right? So even if you have a weakened immune system as a result of having primary lymphedema, it is still recommended that you receive the vaccine, but you have to uh, be aware that your immune response may not be as uh, full as other individuals because your body may lack the ability to mount the uh, full immune response, but it is still worth getting, but you still need to take precautions after uh, receiving the vaccine to make sure that you won't spread it to someone else and or that you won't um, end up getting um, the uh, infection itself and then develop symptomatology from it. Uh, patients are recommended to accept whichever vaccine is offered, providing um, they have no other reason not to. So whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, and now the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine, whichever one is offered, um, take it. Uh, thus far, my experience has been at sites, the sites have a particular vaccine, and that's all they're offering. It's not a, you show up at the site and say, well, no, I'll have the Pfizer one, or no, I want the Moderna one, or no, I want the Johnson & Johnson. Uh, you will receive what, whichever one of those vaccines they have in place. Now, if you choose to want to shop around and take the chance, you can, uh, but do know uh, the recommendation is wherever you sign up, uh, if you have your appointment, keep your appointment and get your vaccine. Now, the vaccination is usually given as an injection into the upper arm. Uh, within the areas of the body affected by lymphedema, the immune cells which fight infection may not work as well. Vaccination into these areas uh, may therefore result in a weaker immune response and less protection from COVID-19. So for me, I have lymphedema in my right arm, hand, uh, and fingers. And so therefore, I did not get the vaccine in my right arm. Instead, I got it in my left, right? Um, damage to the skin within an area of lymphedema can also act as an entry point for infection. So careful skin care and protection is advisable for areas of swelling. Uh, so we therefore recommend that vaccination is avoided in these areas. So whichever limbs are affected by lymphedema, you do not want to get the vaccination in that limb. So I was affected on my right, so I got the injection on my left. Matter of fact, I don't have people do anything on my right. I don't get injections. I don't get blood draws. I don't get blood pressure uh, readings. There is mixed um, reviews, thoughts, and science on whether or not um, you should avoid the uh, lymphedema-affected limb altogether. Um, I'm just one of those individuals that like to err on the side of precaution, uh, unless it was absolutely necessary. Thus far, I've been blessed every time I needed a blood draw or blood pressure or uh, anything that was invasive, they've been able to uh, get what they needed in my left arm. All right, so moving on. So we're providing the following guidance to help select the most appropriate area of the body for vaccination. So if you have one arm affected by lymphedema, both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine should be given in the unaffected opposite arm. If you have had the lymph nodes removed from the axilla, the armpit um, of one arm, both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine should be given in the opposite arm. I had 16 lymph nodes removed out of my right armpit. So left arm was advisable. If both arms are affected by lymphedema, but not the legs, both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine should be given into the thighs and or buttocks. I should say and or, thighs or buttocks. If both arms and one leg is affected by lymphedema, then both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine should be given in the unaffected thigh or buttock. And if both arms and both legs are affected by lymphedema, this can occur in individuals with primary lymphedema. It is a genetic inherited condition. Um, both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine should be given into the limb that is least affected 
by lymphedema. So please note that both the Pfizer and Moderna uh, COVID-19 vaccine documents confirm that injection may be given into the thigh. So lymph node swelling can occur after any vaccine. And it is, and it is a known side effect of both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. Not aware if it is so for Johnson & Johnson. It may be, um, but by the time we were writing these notes, we did not have uh, full disclosure of the symptomatology that could occur after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So be aware uh, that this may be a side effect as well. Um, but it should resolve promptly after the vaccination. So it's not something that you need to be aware or concerned of uh, or freaked out about. Um, and so again, I'm going to stop sharing here. I just wanted to share uh, that guidance along uh, to you regarding uh, the lymphedema uh, and the COVID-19 vaccination um, uh, situation, um, because I realized that there is, there's a lot of fear uh, regarding the infection. There's a lot of concern regarding um, the vaccines, how quickly they were produced. And then there are concerns, uh, valid concerns of individuals who have health uh, conditions that um, they want to make sure that there is uh, no risk of making their condition worse, uh, that there is no risk of developing yet another complication, um, and that the risk that they are taking in getting the vaccine will give them the benefit uh, that has been touted. And so again, I will say to you that I am a living witness. I'm a living testimony. I am one of those individuals that like practicing what she preaches. I do have chronic disabling lymphedema. Have had it now, wow, oof, over 10 years. Um, but I got my vaccine. I was happy to get it. I received the Pfizer vaccine. Um, I remain asymptomatic throughout the vaccination process, except for uh, a minor sore arm around the vaccination site. And so I would encourage anyone that is out there, if you are a cancer uh, patient and or survivor, and you are living with lymphedema, I encourage you to have the discussion with your physician, do your research, and uh, look for examples in individuals with whom you respect um, and trust their opinion. Uh, and the information and data that they give you. Uh, I'm Dr. Cherie and I have gotten my vaccination and I am happy. <laughs> I will still take precautions. And I think that's another thing to bring out. Everyone, when you're walking outside, no one knows that you've gotten the vaccine. Um, and so to see you out there without a mask, without knowing your history can, um, not look so good because it just could look like you're not following the rules. Um, but thus far, none of the vaccines have shown 100% um, in all areas, meaning 100% that will cover you from uh, asymptomatic spread, 100% um, from um, moderate um, and or severe infection, or 100% well, they have shown 100% uh, from hospitalization. But the biggest thing is we don't see the 100% against uh, preventing asymptomatic spread. And so with that in mind, even when you get the vaccination, again, you are helping yourself and you're helping uh, the community and you're helping the world at large as you travel about and go to work and going about your business. But it is still very much appropriate to continue to wear your mask, um, so that we can make sure we can push this nation, this country, our world uh, past this point of this pandemic and get to a place where, you know, COVID-19 may be endemic, meaning it's around, it's like the flu, it may pop up, but we are protected. We're doing what we need to do to make sure that we are protecting ourselves. And guess what? When we do what we need to do to protect ourselves against COVID-19, guess what? We're protecting ourselves from the other hidden viruses that are making their way now, mutating various animals and making it to humans. And before you know it, another one pops up. We have been fighting this in, in the field of medicine. Uh, 
at infinitum. It, it will go on until the world ends. Uh, there will be pandemics that come and go. And how we respond to them and the lessons learned with each one will make a tremendous difference in how well and how quickly we recover. And so again, let me share with you guys, if you wanna know uh, how to find out more information about the Live uh, Today uh, website and um, gain some insight with what we're doing, I wanna share with you here. I don't know why I can't seem to get to it. Um, but let me see. Let's do here. Nope, I don't want to share that one. Let me see. And it is not sharing with you guys. Oh, well, I'm going to end the share um, because it doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Um, here, here we go. I want you guys to see if you want to um, find out more information about the Live Today Show, please visit us at www.live-today.org. You can also shoot us an email at info at live-today.org. You can always give us a call at 754-220-0234. And if you're following us on social media, please hit us up with a comment, a thumbs up, uh, check out any new content and what the Live Today um, Foundation is doing because we're doing a lot, especially for Lymphedema Awareness Month, which starts this month, March 1st. Yay! Uh, but follow us on social media at livetoday.org. That is livetoday, D O T O R G. And you can find videos, all of our shows, and any additional videos and extra little tips that um, we may share via video uh, on YouTube. Just search Live Today Foundation. Guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in today. Um, I, I love what I do and we really want to be a blessing. Uh, I want you guys to tune in next time. We're going to highlight a Live Today uh, recipient and uh, we're going to continue this conversation about how to live. Sometimes, you know, with my content, I like to provide information regarding lymphedema, breast cancer survivorship, additional resources. But the name of our foundation is the Live Today Foundation. And I think it is so important not only to help individuals learn how to live with their diagnosis, live uh, through their treatment, it is also important that we learn how to simply live how to live today and every day, live through our trauma, live through our trials, live through uh, things happening to us that are completely out of our control. And so the Live Today Foundation and the Live Today Show is here to provide that balance um, because sometimes life hits and it throws you for a loop. How will you choose to live today in spite of. And so join us next time when I'm gonna come from a different approach. We're gonna talk about how we live um, in the midst of trials, how we live and push past and create a new vision uh, for ourselves. Um, so I want you to remember that you are on a quest for learning how to live, how to love, inspire, voice, and enjoy. I'm Dr. Sheree. And remember, I want you to be present, take charge of your life, and live today and every day. Until next time.